Hello and welcome. My name is James McNeil. You are at MentalMMA.com, your information source for the emotional game, the mental game of mixed martial arts. Want to talk about UFC 109, relentless February the 6th at Mandalay Bay Event Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. I wish I was there. I'm in Canada. It's cold. Anyways, talk about predictions. Here we go. I've already done a full video and I, I'd encourage you to watch it. I've made a prediction on the Randy Coleman, uh, Mark, sorry, Randy Coleman, Randy Couture, Mark Coleman fight, and I've predicted a knockout, and I've predicted the winner to be Mark the Hammer Coleman. I explained that fully, so check out that video. Let's move on. Nate Marquardt, Shale Sonnen. Uh, I would say the motivation uh, factor and maybe the confidence factor both go to Nate Marquardt. Nate Marquardt uh, can handle wrestlers. He wrestles regularly at his Greg Jackson gym with George St. Pierre, with GSB and with uh, Rashad Evans. So uh, I just think that uh, Nate Marquardt is ready for a wrestler and a grinder. I think he, he deals with that all the time at his club. I also believe Nate Marquardt is so focused, he can taste it. He wants that fight with Anderson. Silva. He wants a rematch. He feels like he's deserved it before now. He is motivated and confident. He is not afraid of a wrestler. Shell Sonnen, on the other hand, he is an incredible fighter. <laughs> no disrespect. I would say, however, he has a little bit of a, a bug in his ear over the, the Greg Jackson factor and the fact that Nate, Nate uh, trains with these guys. Uh, he said that on an interview. He says he's going to beat up G he, he would beat up GSP before he fights Nate and then beat up Rashad Evans later. Uh, which doesn't mean he's that confident. It means it's in his head. So, uh, it may or may not be, but that's what I think. And I believe his focus on being in politics. He's, his, his career focus is not on fighting. It is on politics. Nate Marquardt, no question in mind. There's one thing on his mind, and that is getting this fight, uh, winning this fight and winning it in, in a definitive, dramatic fashion so that he can move on and get his rematch with Anderson Silva. My prediction, Nate Marquardt, maybe even in the first round and maybe a ground and pound uh, referee stoppage. Next, Mike Swick, Paulo Tiago. Now, this is an interesting interesting fight. Mike Swick loved the guy. Super quick Swick, right? And so he, he lost a fight against Dan Hardy. Dan Hardy, when they said Dan Hardy was getting a shot against GSP, I thought, you know what? Maybe he should fight someone uh, like John Fitch. See how he does against Fitch, because I don't think he would do very well. And yet, here he is fighting Paulo Tiago. Paulo Tiago if I just looked at the two names, I would put, I would, I would have probably just as a, as a fan said, Mike Swick will probably win. Paul Tiago um, also lost a fight with John uh, John Fitch. John Fitch? Yes, Fitch. And uh, he did great in that fight. So my suggestion, my guess here is that Tiago's actually going to survive and win this. I believe he's going to survive that, that super uh, quick attack by Mike Swick, and he's going to take him down. I believe Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu might be the way that Mike Swick loses this one. Uh, no disrespect to Mike Swick, but my money's actually on Paulo Tiago. I don't gamble. But if I did, I'd put my money on Paulo Tiago. Focused, respectful, honorable, um, hardcore. So... A uh, bit of a surprise, that one, but that's where, uh, where I'm going. Damian Maya, Dan Miller. This is another great fight. Damian Maya looked unstoppable. He looked like no one could beat him. A gentleman, a man who doesn't want to hurt anyone. He wants to win without inflicting damage or receiving damage. I love the guy in a million ways. The problem is he's fighting another fighter that I really love, uh, Dan Miller. Dan Miller and his brother, great guys, great fighters. They, they seem to be very respectful and honorable. So we've got two great guys in a great fight. Um, I think the, the edge might go to Dan Miller because I believe he's more of a complete fighter. I believe he has more options. The problem is what Damian Maya is so good at, uh, he's that good at. That's a really tough one. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, you know what, I'm going to go with Damian Maya. Ah, okay, so I'm not quite sure why I did that. I am going to go with Damian Maia, only because I believe he can handle the striker, uh, and he's just so good at that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's a bit of a shocker to me. I can't believe I just did that. Dan Miller, sorry, I, I'm a huge fan. Next, Matt the Terracera against Frank Trigg. Two guys who haven't always been considered the most lovable guys. Two guys who aren't considered at the peak of their career. Uh, who's going to win? Does anyone care? I do, because they're both great fighters. Um, I would put my, uh, the edge on Matt Serra, actually. Uh, Frank Trigg, uh, his, he, he's a talker, that's for sure, and he's a great fighter, but Matt Serra, I believe, is more complete and more stable. I'm not sure it's going to be a thrilling fight. I'm guessing a lot of words come from Frank Trigg, and I bet you Matt Serra is going to take him. So my money's on Matt Serra that way. I believe motivation, actually desperate motivation, goes to Frank Trigg, but, uh, but 
but I'm not sure if he takes Matt Serra as seriously as he should, and so he might be a little bit overconfident. Okay, moving on, Mac Danzig, and I don't know this guy, Justin, so forgive me, Justin, uh, I haven't done my research on you, but Mac Danzig, huge fan of this guy, and it's about the emotions for Mac. Um, Mac Danzig is a better fighter than he has been showing us sometimes, and so I really hope that Mac Danzig shows up for this one. I saw him in a pre-fight interview, he looked good, he looked calm, and hopefully all of them is going to show up, hopefully his corner will be supportive and encouraging, talk to him adult to adult, and uh, and I believe if that's the case, Mac Danzig is going to show us his stuff. I'm thrilled that the UFC keeps giving him another shot, and I hope tonight he earns his his next shot. So my uh, not tonight, sorry, on February the sixth, my prediction goes to Mac Danzig, uh, Melvin Gallard, uh, no prediction there. Uh, he's again very very volatile emotionally. He swings for the fences. It's a win or a lose. So I'm going to predict a, a first round win for somebody there. Uh, uh, Felipe Nover and Rob Emerson. Felipe Nover uh, surprised everyone. The, the 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 vicious nurse. He's he's incredible and. Uh, uh, and he, he was incredible on The Ultimate Fighter, but when it came to the UFC and the big show, he hasn't been the same guy. Rob Emerson, however, he did not show as as well in The Ultimate Fighter. I mean, he showed well, but not as well as his UFC fights have shown. My money, my prediction would be on Rob Emerson. He has a confidence, but he's very... Both of them are honorable, but I believe Philippe uh, Nover is underestimating, and I don't understand why. I think he, he maybe listened a little bit too much to the press he's received and the confidence people have in him. That went a little bit high. Brian Stan, Phil Davis, both look really good. Phil Davis, I uh, can't even see a picture here, a little bit of an unknown. Great guy in an interview. He seems to have a great amount of honor and respect uh, for Brian Stan. Brian Stan, the military man who just knocks people the heck out. So uh, I know I've changed the wording there, but he just knocks people out. And uh, Brian Stan looks great. Uh, because I don't know Phil Davis, I can't make a prediction. I apologize, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's gonna be a great fight. Uh, Tim Hag, Chris, uh, people have been pronouncing that Tuckshire. I have a friend named Touchere, uh, very, very similar or uh, identical um, um, spelling. My guess is on Tim Hag. I think he's gonna be a lot more careful. He's a Canadian. And uh, I believe he's going to be a lot more careful this time, not going to get knocked out fast. I think he's got a lot more to show us, and I'm looking forward to seeing great things from him. I think he does have a handle on how Chris is going to fight, and I think he's going to do a great job. Tim Hag for the win. Uh, and then the Gracie fight, I don't know. I don't know these guys, so I won't speak to it. This is going to be a great card. UFC 109 Relentless, February 6th, uh, Mendeley Bay Event Center in Las Vegas. So I'm going to be there. I'm going to be tuning in, probably doing some Twittering. But uh, definitely check out MentalMMA.com for all your fight predictions and the justification behind those predictions when we look at the fighters and their mental and emotional makeup as they're going into the cage. This is James McNeil, MentalMMA.com, your information source for the mental game of mixed martial arts. I'll talk to you soon.